Hello and welcome to the new video. If you have any questions about the video, leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. There is a lot of timestamps for you to check, such as item, gems. If you run into trouble recreating the build and you find yourself struggling with any kind of problems, there is a timestamp for you called troubleshooting. Check this out. And there is a lot of questions that people ask me on the live stream. So the exploded totem are very popular and there is like multiple different variations of it. Since I wanted to play a Pathfinder, um, I wanted to check out the new nodes, the, the rework of the class, and I just wanted to have some fun with Pathfinder. So Explodey Totem, I would say they are extremely broken and they, they require very minimum investment in the build. And they, they can provide you with like a very good mapping, a decent bossing. Even while recording this video, I was doing my blighted maps on the live stream. I went from level 90 to level 92 and I think I only died twice. So that should tell you that the build is really, really good. With my very bad items, I did. Um, I attempted twice the Hall of Grandmaster. Um, I'm going to leave a clip as well. The first try, I think I died once or twice to the block guys but the second uh, attempt was very nice and clean clean so I would say if you just want to farm the Hall of Grandmasters for the currency go for it the build is absolutely great there's only one map modifier that breaks the build and you cannot be ruining it if the map has reduced flask charges you have to re-roll it or run a different map because otherwise you won't be able to sustain them that if you decide to recreate my build, please be careful and listen very carefully to the gear section and gem section because there's going to be a lot of minor things that you may overlook and I'm going to try to highlight them as those very important things. So now I'm just going to leave you a couple of clips, um, some bosses and an invitation that I was able to do with the build. So in this short clip you're gonna see the first problem of the build. Whenever I die and I have to go into um, a boss fight, I have to pop my flask and because of that, um, if I cannot do it quickly, I will die right away. You're gonna see me now dying a couple times until I can pop my flask, run away and deal with the encounter. Challenge begins. The champion will fall. Simulator. Estral Avalanche.
For the Pandit choice, we're choosing to kill all of them and getting two passive points. For the Pantheon choice, you pretty much can go whatever you want. I just went with the Branking for the stone, but while mapping and doing other things, I never got too many problems with the stone. And for the Minor God, I'm just using Soul of Aberrant just to get rid of the Burning Ground. For your Ascendancy points, I will go Normal, Cruel, Merciless, Eternal. There's not much happening with the uh, passive tree. I'm just gonna highlight like some kind of good quality of life. One of the trap mastery, the trap cannot be damaged. This is absolutely great because sometimes the monster is gonna shoot those lightning bolts and they're gonna kill all of your traps. So I would highly recommend getting the, the traps cannot be damaged. They, this is gonna mean that your traps always gonna be triggered and doing the damage. Another thing that's very interesting is here. A totem stunts enemies around them. Sometimes what's gonna happen, you're gonna throw your traps and the, the enemy is just gonna be hitting the totems because you're gonna be constantly summoning new totems. So the totem is gonna be taunting them all the time. It's a very good like a defense offense um, mastery because you're just making sure that the enemies are coming to your totems and they are exploding. So the flask in these builds are very important. And I will go step by step for every flask why, we, why I'm using the flask. So I'm using a sapphire for the less damage and for the cold resistance. Because I'm missing a cold resistance and uh, since I'm a pathfinder I can sustain permanently my flask just e even sitting in the hideout. As you can see over here they're gonna be refreshing themselves. I have and I'm reducing um, my mana cost because the, the trap totem that we're gonna be throwing all the time they cost ridiculous amount of mana so reducing it is kind of make it possible that we can just spam it the next one is i'm using a topaz when we fall in the same thing reduce charge used and I have the curse because you know having the temp chain on or any other curse is a bit annoying so having that flask is absolutely great and you want to have the reduced mana and the reduced effect on the curses on the resistance flask as they require the less charges and you can permanently upkeep them. Then I have a movement flask. Again, I follow the same thing. Reduce charge user and I have a regen just to give me an extra survivability. And this is the most important part that probably people are going to have uh, problems because if you won't have the replica, and that's very important, a replica of the sorrow of the divine, you will have problems with the mana. Because if you read the flask, the flask gives you Eldritch battery, and on top of that, uh, your life flask will apply to the ES. So if you press the replica and you pre press your divine life flask, if you have the Pathfinder note, the Master Surgeon of here, what's going to happen? Our life flask will refill our life and our ES and this is the, um, the trick that we're using uh, to keep our mana uh, permanently up. So I'm gonna press the life flask and there we go. And I can spam spam as much as I want. Then you play the life flask again and you can sp spamming infinitely as long as you have your life flask and your divine sorrow. Here is the fun part that you're gonna see how bad is my gear is actually and how much content and how good the build really feels. So let's start with my bow. My bow is absolutely bad. The only meaningful stats that I have on my bow is the increased trap throwing speed and I have the explode totem uh, crucible node. The, the rest of the nodes they give me nothing. Yeah, sure, maybe the dexterity gives me something. And you don't actually need the six link bow. As long as you have the exploded to, uh, totem node on your bow, you could have a body armor six linked. 
then this link is just basically resistance uh, live and I'm getting some flat energy shield because of the divine sorrow and I need some and flat energy shield just to able to spam my traps the second ring follows the same thing it's just I have some strength on it live flat energy shield and resistance uh, I'm using the impresence because I want to get the free despair cures my gloves have just like the suppress some life resistance pretty much and I use it the implicit just to get myself additional chance to poison and trap throwing speed from the eater and exar implicit uh, my belt pretty much is the same life resistance the one thing that's very important in the belt get yourself the 20% reduce flash charge use this really helps out us with the uh, sustaining the flask perma permanently all the time then I'm using a unique boots uh, to, to torture step I think that's how you pronounce them and I'm just using them for the increased totem life and you can get yourself they have they were, they were very cheap I don't remember I think I spent them about 5 to 10 C then the quiver is I'm just using the the base that gives me the 50% physical damage gain as the extra chaos damage and I'm having some kind of chance to poison and increase poison damage I have like a bad life bad resistance on it and I have a flat um, energy shield craft so my helmet has a enchantment for the purity of element increase mana reservation uh, uh, it has some kind of resistance crafted life and I got a strength from the essence and then I rolled myself the the implicit modifiers for the increased mana reservation if you won't get this increased mana reservation you're probably gonna have to drop some level 1 auras in it then I'm using the lightning coil so I can transfer the 50% of physical damage to lightning this helps me out with the, my defense one thing that you can do that I didn't think about it uh, until I started creating the build that you could actually get yourself maybe a hubris helmet that will give you some good amount of flat energy shield and you wouldn't have to craft or find yourself like a jewelry or on my, on my quiver crafting the flat energy shield and probably that would solve your problem another thing is um, if you're still missing the chance to poison you could get the ice fang this is a decent ring not the best but decent you can buy it for a relatively very cheap and you can get yourself some kind of chance to poison on, on the jewels gems are very flexible in the build so let's start with the cures I have a despair increase area effect and blasphemy since I have an impresence this gives me a 100% free despair then I'm using some auras in my gloves such as clarity level 1 keep it at level 1 because I'm only using the level 1 clarity as on the where's the note over here uh, over here increase damage for each aura or hell affecting you that's why I'm, you're gonna see me having a lot of uh, auras level 1 just to get the generic increase 8% of the damage that's why I'm using the clarity level 1 I'm using purity of lemon simply just for the resistance and deal with the ignite shocks and more then I'm using malevolence because that's more damage defines banner because that's a 10% aura and I can get the 8% um, increased damage then I'm using diversion herald of agony you don't need the diversion one uh, you could just use a basic one and get yourself a the the ice fang ring or any other chance to poison and you could save up a huge chunk because the diversion one currently costs about a one divine then I'm using level one precision the same thing just to get myself the increase 8% damage from the aura mastery vitality the same thing and I'm using steel skin on my left click so in my body armor I'm keeping a blink arrow faster attack second wind you just give me a two charges and I have a plague bearer but I don't really often use it I even forget sometimes I forgot about it that I even have a socket in my 
um, body armor because just the traps and the proliferation from the pathfinder is enough for me but if you get yourself a blue socket somewhere you can even use the frost blink since the frost blink and the blink arrow do not share the same cooldown so you can zoom around a bit more if you want so you can do something like this Bam. so if you just want to zoom around a little bit more go for it so your main six legs should look like something like this you're gonna be using a trap support with devouring totem that should be your, your first two legs this, the third link should be multiple totems if you only have the explode totem crucible node over here. There is a possibility to swap the multiple totems, but would, that would require to have a decent bow. So you would need this node when you have 50% chance to summon two totems, and then you're gonna go on the mastery, there's another 30%. And you would need to have explode the totem. Um, note over here so you will need two nodes on one bow then you could swap multiple totem for example for enhance this will just give you your totem a bit quality in then your totem is gonna get a bit more life and you're getting more damage but if you only have like me in this situation the explodey on death um the, the crucible node you need to have multiple totems then you're linking yourself a multi-trap and cluster trap. This allows you to spam more traps. And then we have empower. So probably one of the questions is going to be the budget on the build and how much did I spend? I did spend on my build between three to about five divines. But you could very easily replicate this build on about two divines. So for your first uh, step, you should be buying yourself a bow just with the explode totem. It doesn't have to be a six link. I would replace the lightning coil with the tabula. I would remove the diversion herald of agony with the normal herald of agony and probably get myself an ice fang as a ring. And then your poison chance is capped. You have a six link that's very cheap and you have the bow that explodes um, the totems. And you can do it between one to two divines because probably. Um, around about 100c or a little bit more is just the totem node on your bow so the build is very cheap to start and you can way way improve this build to like skyrocket numbers but i'm not gonna be doing that i just wanted to have some fun uh, with the build and see how far i can get the build on like a very low budget so you might be wondering how did i level up my character so i started as a Pathfinder Toxicrain until about level 52 when I was able to f first buy myself a bow uh, with the explode mode but the expl when I mean the explode mode is this one so I started my tree by going over here I took those nodes over here there I moved it to this generally chaos cluster then I took some damage over time and the chaos node over here on the shadow and all of that all of those nodes, the damage nodes, did help me out just to get to level 52 with the Toxic Rain. So here's my final opinion about the build. If you're one of those uh, people who cannot farm the ridiculous amount of currency, well, well I'm talking ridiculous, about like 100 more defines, this is a build for you and you should absolutely go for it. Because just by having this, mo this node, this this single node on your bow and just capping your resistance getting like you know to some life flask curses you will be able to farm most of the content i, I think <laughs> you're not gonna find a build that costs so little and it can do so much content and it's very enjoyable to play i do hope that you did enjoy the video thank you for watching i will see you later in my next video